So Gaffer was sat here ahead of visiting Edgeley Park in the National League on Saturday, but let's touch on the week we've just had. Um, firstly, uh, talking United in the FA Trophy, you've had a few days to reflect on that. Do you have any different thoughts than you did in your post-match interview? No, I've watched it back. I felt we were good in spell, especially in the first half. I felt they had a 10-minute spell where they had a wave of attacks and I thought we, we managed that good in terms of defensively. Then I think we finished the half strong and knowing Gary Johnson and the side he has available to him, they're going to come out and have a reaction. And I felt that we didn't start the second half. I can go into in-depth in terms of what was wrong and where we, where we went wrong, but I've spoken to the group. I've addressed it with individuals. We've got the best offensive record in the league for a reason. Tuesday night was, I hold my hands up, made a decision on, on Mark Ricketts coming off the pitch and I probably should have shored it up with a different shape and probably different personnel, but we've opened the game up against a side that counters and probably the, the best at it. The reasons being that's why they scored the most goals. So I've had, had a long look at myself. We've had a chat with regards to the players yesterday. We parked it within four minutes of training because the focus, like you said, turned straight to Stockport on Saturday. And no disrespect to Torquay and the result, we go and get a, a win on Saturday. It, it most definitely puts Tuesday evening to bed. So you touch on that defensive record that we boast the best in the league. Um, despite that, in the last three games, including an FA Cup game and an FA Trophy, we've conceded seven. Is it important for you that we get back onto that way and, and really start to shore up defensively? 100%. Obviously, two, two components went in in Dave Stevens and Corey Whiteley. Pierre Mongoy went down at uh, Dover. So we've had a little bit of a change in terms of there, but we, we feel that we can get a a more rigid unit across that five now for the coming weeks and I think consistency will help us. Um, on Tuesday evening, yeah, you look at some of the individual areas and some of the goals that cost us, teams don't offer that up for us and something we need to address is the goals for. So that's what we've tried to do. We're, we're looking at a, a very offensive side tomorrow to ensure that we can get goals on the ball because I feel defensively when, when we're on our game, we're, we're very strong. So your defensive unit will include if selected Christian Pierce, we haven't spoken since him coming into the building. How good of a signing is he and how excited are you to work with him? Yeah, when it came about, I know that it was someone that I, I thought could really boast and do some real good quality work with the unit we've already got in the building and watching him in, in the sessions this week, he's had four sessions this week, which shows the quality of an individual he is. He brings athleticism to him. He's got a, a way of playing, good stature, and he comes with an unbelievable experience. So for me, yeah, he's a great addition to the group. And like I said on Tuesday evening, he comes into the building with already the best defensive record. So it tells you the, the level of player I believe he is to come into a unit where it's only conceded 11 goals in 14 games. So focus now turns to Stockport on Saturday. And in truth, it's been an indifferent two weeks for probably both clubs. Um, two weeks ago, heading into the FA Cup weekend, both teams were on all fronts, FA Cup, FA Trophy and the league. Um, fast forward two weeks and both teams are, are now out of the FA Cup, albeit to much higher opposition. Um, both gave good accounts of themselves. Um, in the FA Trophy, both teams played against tough opposition, us and Torquay and, and Stockport and Notts County, and, and, and both um, left the, uh, the competition in the fourth round. Um, does this give an opportunity for, for both teams to now really hone in and focus on the league? And, and also, is this game in particular important that they, both teams want to get back to a positive performance and positive result? 100%. You've, you've alluded to it. Obviously, our opposition, Mill, their opposition being West Ham, um, their opposition, Notts County, our opposition, Torquay. I, I said it in a couple of pre-matches prior to Mill. It was nice being all three fronts. We had a squad available to ensure that if we were to progress on all three fronts, that we were going to be strong. Um, now the focus solely turns to the league. They picked up a great result on, on the road on Tuesday evening against Dagenham. So I, I can imagine they've put to bed the, the result against Notts County on, on Saturday. But... For me, yeah, we go to Stockport. We've done a double over them last year. They're a very good side. They've got great individuals. They've got an understanding of the way of playing. They had a very good manager in Jim Gannon. I have to say, what, where that's come from, I do not know. And that's not for me to make a comment on. But I think he's a very good manager. Cross pass with him against Northwich Victoria in the FA Cup. And you see the calibre of personnel he, 
is in terms of his stature and the way he goes about his business. And I think he got on playing superb football. They are going to be tough. They're going to be very tough. We've worked on it today where we feel that we can nullify them and go and, and hone in on their, their weaknesses. And we go there with the opportunity of getting into the playoffs. And that's a focus of ours that we've had since playing Dover. Maybe not getting the opportunity of going into fourth, fifth spot, but we, we're in a good position. We're in a good position with two thirds of the seasons to go. We've brought in Marais, we've brought in Christian Pierce. We're looking to do a couple of bit, bit more bits of business. And I honestly believe now we've, we've put ourselves at the starters block to have a good, strong middle to end of the season. So you talk about uh, Jim Gannon there, and it came to surprise to all of us, I think, that um, he was uh, relieved of his duties um, during the week. Um, it, it's a strange one because, like me, you probably watched the West Ham game and they, they put on a really good account of themselves against Premier League opposition. And if it wasn't for that little bit of quality at the end of the game, um, it might, may have been a different result. And they find themselves fourth in the league, two games in hand that can take them second. Um, as a club, from the outside looking in, they look like they're in a, a really good position with a, a really strong squad. How much of a shock is that to you and other managers in the National League? Like I said, in terms of Jim Gannon, and he said it's not based on results, it's based on the culture. I don't know how he works. All I'm looking at is, you've hit the nail on the head, they were third in the third round of the FA Cup. They went to the last 32 against Notts County, He's currently sitting fourth in the, in the division. His recruitment this year has been fantastic. They've gone from a team that were part-time last year that just missed out on playoffs to a team that have gone full-time. Yes, I know they got the backing of a new man and Carrington and all the bits in terms of that. But for me, yeah, he's done a fantastic job. It's not for me to pass comment on on what the finer details of him not being in the, in the job anymore. But I don't like seeing managers lose their jobs. I, I hate it. I think it's a cutthroat industry and... Yeah, people aren't given the, the luxury of time. You'd say he was given the luxury of time and he delivered on his job. Five years, I think it was, three days ago, they were celebrating him being back in the, in the building. So it's tough. It's horrible. Football's relentless. We all know that. We fall in love with it because of that. And I think he's done a fantastic job at Stockport. And whoever follows his footsteps has got a, a massive task because where he's put that club currently is amazing. So it'll be their assistant manager who takes the reins at the weekend. That was announced um, as part of their, their, their announcement of Jim Gannon leaving. Um, and he'll be taking the reins of a great side that Jim's assembled. Um, just to name a few, um, and some of these are, are new signings in the summer. Some of them were previously in the building. Um, James Jennings, Connor Jennings, Hogan, Kitchen, Crowsdale, Maynard, John Rooney, Alex Reid. Um, that's a great side. Um, I've probably missed out a few there, but are there much oppositions that have strength and depth like that? Nah, yeah, listen, Palmer, Keane, you've got some great personnel in there. Um, they're a good side. I've watched their last four games and they differ between shapes. They play a back four with a three in midfield and three up top. They play a three, five, two, slight opposition in terms of out of possession when they go to a front three. They're a good team. They're a very, very good outfit. I remember watching them live on the box against Notts County and I thought it was two league sides having a right go. So, yeah, they've got, they've got a squad there that should be able to compete and take Torquay maybe all the way. Um, but you look at ours, our real off ours, Reed, Katishi Manga, Kane Smith, Tom Champ, Pierce, Fifefield, Femi, Kieran Murta, Corey Whiteley, Gus Mufata. So, yeah, I think we've assembled a superb squad this year. I think we've got great strength and depth. We've, we've probably just got one or two positions that we've not got that much support and backup for. But other than that, we're strong. We're strong. Stockport are strong. I honestly envisage a very, very good locking of horns tomorrow afternoon. Two good sides having a go to earn three points. And I think the National League is strong. National League is strong. I, I had a conversation with another manager yesterday that we honestly believe League One is as the closest it's been to the Championship by a country mile with the likes of Hull, Cholton, Sunderland, Ipswich in it. And I honestly believe that the National League is probably the closest it's ever been to League Two. And you look at the top 10, 12 sides in the National League, I honestly believe we'll go and compete at the level above. So the strength and depth in Stockport's team, as in ours, you can say that about 10 to 15 clubs in the National League this year. And I think people... Look at James Rowe at Chesterfield, done some very good business in recent weeks. 
he knows he needs bodies in the building to ensure that there's a consistency in their results and there isn't going to be people fatigued or any excuses and not being able to rotate their squad so we've put ourselves in a good position Stockport got themselves in a good position listen I can't deal with you get Jim Gannon his assistant or their players I deal with what I've got in my building and how we set up to go and get three points tomorrow